everybody, I'm Devin with Nimby Creative and I'm here to talk to you guys about something really fun and I'm super excited to tell you about it. If you don't know already, there's a platform that I use called Show It and Show It is a website building platform similar to something like Squarespace. What I love about Show It, it utilizes WordPress. So the best part is that when you already have a WordPress blog, you're able to migrate your blog over to Show It and you're able to just continue using WordPress to write all your blogs and it helps keep your website fresh and you're able to do all of the things that you would normally be doing doing in WordPress. Except some plugins, there are some um, setbacks in that area, um, but there is a few tricks that I know to help you um, get those plugins that you really want to be using. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Show It. It's going to be more of a high level video, um, which is kind of like the tips and tricks of like what it is, kind of walking you through the, the application itself and showing you like what it's capable of. I will be doing later um, some videos on specific things and specific needs that you guys want. So as you're playing around in Show It, just let me know if you have any questions and just leave a comment below. So without further ado, let's Let's get started. All right, so here we are on showit.co. This is the website um, that kind of tells you a little bit more about the application Show It. You can see on the home page, they kind of give you a little bit of a video walkthrough of you know how the site works. Um, and they give you a lot of details and information and show you how like you can um, make it um, mobile ready and friendly and everything. So um, there's a lot of free templates that are available and templates that you can also purchase from their shop. And here's what I love about it and what I mentioned earlier that Show It works with WordPress. So it's one of the reasons I love using it because I don't have to go into WordPress and manipulate code and do all these things that make it a little bit harder. I get to utilize Show It in a way where I can design my websites to look exactly how I want them to, function how I want them to, and with the added bonus of being able to use WordPress. This is their pricing. And I always go with the advanced blog option. It just works great. Um, they'll migrate your current blog for you. I think it's just really useful to have the advanced option because you'll always have all the stuff that you need um, to have a really good website. If you're just looking for a really simple one-page website, you don't need a blog, the standard is perfectly fine. With a blog, you can boost your SEO, have fresh content on your website all the time, which is a big reason Google will have you up in, the, in their listings. I would at least recommend at the minimum to get a with blog option, the $24 a month, but if you plan to be in here a lot and want to use a team and have them help you with migration of your blog and you know anything that's related to that, it's, they've been really helpful. I know that there's been a few times where I had a question on something and I've pulled up the little chat box, which is like this. It's nice because when you ask a question, sometimes if they're able to, they can just do it for you. And so that's to me, it's worth the extra to have the advanced blog. So those are the different options. I'm gonna go ahead and start a free trial here just to show you guys what this looks like. So here's where you like create your account. You put in your first and last name, your business, phone number. You can choose your industry. And the only purpose of this, just so that Show It knows what your industry is, I think it kind of helps them understand like who their clients are and stuff. So it doesn't really make a difference as far as like what features you get or anything like that. I am obviously in design, so I will go ahead and use web design. And then you pick your site URL, and this is not the same as your um, domain name. So this is just going to be for show it for your trial. And so you could just use whatever you want. I'm going to just do test site, and then you say you accept and submit. So once your account is set up, um, you can launch show it five. And to access this on its own, you'll just go into app showit.co. So when you first start, um, if you don't already have a template design, they will give you a bunch of options because you have to start with one of their templates and they have a ton of free options. So you don't have to stick with it. You don't need to really think about it too much if you want to really do a custom design. These are really good starting off points if you want. And then Jason from Show It always says hello with a little pop-up um, chat window. And this is the window that you can utilize to ask questions and they're really good about responding and helping out. So I really love utilizing them. Over here too, it's kind of hidden, but when you hover over here, there's your designs. And this is where you're going to add um, a template. So if you purchase a template from another website or one of my templates, you would go here and click add design to library. And when the, you get the shared design key that is with your download, this is where you paste it and then you hit enter and it'll just automatically add the design to your library. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to start off with a template just to show you the easeability and how you use them. If you want to see more, you can go down to the bottom and there's the premium designs and this is their shop. You can choose like different styles and you can see like the full layout of some of these websites. Click on one, you get to see 
it up close. It's a little bit nicer to be able to see like what you're gonna get, especially if you're gonna purchase it. If you want more information on it, um, you can come here and there's like little scroll throughs. You can view a live demo of it, which is really nice. You're able to kind of see what it will actually look like and how it will actually function. And I definitely recommend doing that before you purchase a template because you wanna make sure that it's gonna meet your needs. Take your time if you wanna pick a template, just make sure that it has a lot of the functionality you want and that you know the price is worth what you're getting out of it. So just make sure you're really looking at all those little details and that the user experience of it makes sense to you. So when you're looking at a template, just because it looks pretty doesn't necessarily mean it might be one you want to use. So one of the things to think about when you're doing the live demo, make sure that you're actually not confused yourself in the site. So if you're not able to find information, you kind of want to like go into the website in the demo mode as one of your clients, thinking about what you would want them to look for, how easy it is to find your blog or how easy it is to contact you. Pay attention to those details because that will really help you make um, a good purchase choice. Most of these sites are actually pretty well designed but you know you just want to make sure that the site template you choose fits your business and your experience so there's a lot to choose from tons of different price options um, and you can choose up here if you just want to see free and then there's a bunch of different um, options as far as styles go so so again for the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of the free options so when you first open up your template design, everything is laid out how you would have seen it in the live demo. It pulls up the mobile view and the desktop view. Down here is where you can change which view you're gonna be looking at. So if you just wanna look at one or the other. Um, if you notice on the desktop view, it's pretty big. So you can go over here to zoom out and make it a little bit smaller. One thing I do notice that in Show It, if you go too small, the view starts to change. So be aware of that. If you look here, the, the line of Photography Studio for creative has now moved into a two line sentence but when you zoom in it's one line so just be aware that if you want to kind of get a perspective that you want to make sure that you're seeing it the correct way and then another option too is that when you go into review you're able to see the site live so um, you can click on this link up here and it will open up the site as if you were seeing it live. you can scroll through see how it functions kind of seeing that live demo mode and it's a really nice way to you know check your work make sure things are turning out the way they are as you're adjusting your website. If you want to do this on your phone and see the preview on your phone, you're going to need to take this demo link, the site preview link, and you're going to um, send it to yourself. I either text it to myself or send it through email and you're able to open this link on your phone and be able to see what it looks like on mobile because when you see it here, it's not quite the same preview. So you just want to be sure that it actually looks like it does on here because sometimes there's things that are just a tiny bit off. So this is kind of an online demo but just try to make sure that you look at it on your actual device to make sure it's looking like you want it to so the other thing to note is the side by side is a really cool option again it's kind of hard because the um, perspective can be a little bit off when yours depends on how big your screen is I just have my laptop so it gets kind of cut off when you see it at the actual view or everything's in the one line it's still kind of cool you can kind of you know make sure that things are how you want them to be so they look as close to possible as far as your mobile experience and your desktop experience and this is fun example of that. Another thing to note about Show It is if you change something on your desktop view or on your mobile view, it will adjust one or the other in the process. Sometimes things aren't exactly the same, so I'll try and show you a preview of that later, but sometimes if you change the text here and you change the font, say I change this to Montserrat, You'll notice how it changed on the desktop, but it didn't change on the mobile device. So that's one thing that um, is kind of a pain, but it's you know not a huge deal. You just need to make sure that you're aware of it and you're changing it as you go. The other thing that is similar to that is if you change the color, it won't change it on the other one either. So you do have to kind of double your work a little bit, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. Over here on your left, you have your site tab and under your site tab, you have your site settings, design settings, your media library, different pages you have on your site your blog and the blog template for the blog in a single post and then site canvases I'll get into site canvases later um, it's kind of its own beast so I will definitely do a different video on this um, to give you a better idea of how to utilize site canvases when you first start your site one of the first things I do is I go into design settings and here's where you're able to choose your colors for your website so that you have an easy click access to colors that are part of your brand it's a really nice feature that they have you're also able to do the same thing with your type styles so here's where you would 
would utilize what you want as your main fonts, how you want them to look, you know, if you want things centered to the left, if you want things in all caps or title case or whatever it is. So this is where you would adjust all of that. You're also able to change your background colors. Here, you just literally click on the box and you're able to change the color and you can put your own hex code in here. So if you have your brand colors, you can just copy and paste in your hex codes. Or if you don't have brand colors yet, which you should, you can pick your colors here just by choosing and clicking on any of the colors and adjusting them more through this little slider. On the font tab, you're able to choose fonts. Um, it already has all of the Google fonts preloaded, which is actually a really nice feature. And having Google fonts on your website makes things a lot easier too, um, because most computers are able to utilize Google fonts. So you won't have to worry about somebody going on your website and them not having the font. Another option is if you have purchased fonts um, and you want to be able to add them on your website because you have a very specific branded font, all you need to do is go over here to where it says custom fonts and click on the font squirrel link that they give you. And it's really easy. All you need to do is click upload fonts. And when you find the font you want, you will click on it and then it will come in here. You have to click yes to agree to the fact that you have purchased the font and that you legally have the rights to embed them on your website. You should check your licensing with the service that you bought your web font from. Once this is all done and you have your font chosen, you can click start download and it'll create a zip file for you. And then once you do that, you will go into your um, media library and you will actually click on upload files and choose your WOFF file. It'll be in your media library. So once it's in there, you can close out of here and then go back to design settings, back to the fonts tab, and then under library, um, WOFF will have a drop down, and your font will be there. So you just click on the one that you've added into your library, add the font name so it appears up here, and then add custom font. So this one is just uh, glyphs and you know kind of little extras for my particular font, but you can add fonts easily here by doing that, and then it'll show up when you choose fonts to use. So one of the things to know is when you do get a template, the images that are here aren't in your media library. So you will need to add your own photos, obviously, that are part of your brand and your images that you have rights to. So if you want to change the photo that you see here, you're able to choose a gallery from this um, icon or you can do like a media library and you can just add one photo. The difference between a gallery and just adding a photo is the gallery is going to do like options where it slides photos through and you can have multiple um, images in one spot. So here is an example of that where they have two photos so the, the hero of their website changes from you know this photo to this photo. In that you can manage images so when you add photos to your gallery you're able to adjust the photos. You can also switch which one you see first. You are able to usually kind of adjust the photos. Um, I try to click them in the order I want them to upload. I notice that sometimes that works a little bit better. But yeah, so that's where you would add and take away images. If you don't want something, you would just click the trash icon and it will get rid of that photo for you. In gallery settings, you have the ability to adjust all of the features of the gallery, how much time you have between the type of transition, etc. Um, you also have the ability to size it. This horizontal locking is where you can change the view from either, well, basically if you don't use it and you unclick it and you hit preview, it won't go the full length of the screen anymore. Now it's just cut off to where the end of the website is. My screen is larger than the preview was on the app. So if I go back and I hit this one where it shows an arrow going to both, it's going to adjust for the screen that is viewing. And now you notice how it's the full width of the screen. So it'll stay that size no matter how big my screen gets, it'll adjust accordingly. And that's what that means. So it's basically making it responsive. That's a really nice feature that it has. This particular template has well, has one page, but it has you know a few different um, options. So it's basically one long page. So if you want any of these details, it will actually drag you down to that part of the website. For example, in about, it'll take you to about services, but it's just staying on the same website. So that's a way to do a one page website. If you want to have more pages or you want more detail on pages, you just need to go to pages and then add or select a new page or add a blank page. When you select a new page, it'll allow you to choose one of your previous designs. So if you want to stay consistent, you can choose home again and it'll create a duplicate of what you have on your home page. If you want to do a blank page, it will just give you one canvas and you can start from fresh 
there. The other option too is that's really nice is once you're in your new page, if you still wanna use your navigation and make that the same as it is here where it has all of your buttons for the different areas, if you click on page and you click on these three dots up here, you can add a new canvas and you can go back to your home page and choose your navigation and that will actually add it to the page that you were on. All you need to do is drag it to the place you want it, which is on top, and it will show up now on your page like it was on your other page. To adjust the canvas size, all you need to do is click on the canvas you want to adjust and then on the canvas drop down, you go into your height and you can change it to be as tall or as short as you would like. And then you have the other option of adjusting its sticky state, which um, is more of a little bit advanced feature that I will go into more detail in another video. You can adjust your canvas background so you can change the color to one of your branded colors. You can change it to an image or a video. The video is a file that you can upload, but it has to be under eight megabytes. I will also be doing another video on how to um, make your video small enough for show it so that you can use it on here. But it also allows you to do a loop, um, to change the size options, um, where you'd position it, all of that. So it's kind of a nice little option to have a video on your website. Um, we'll stick with color for this. When you want to add a shape or icon or anything, that's all under this center icon right here. This one's for text. In your design settings, you preset your title heading, subheading, and paragraph. This is a quick way to just add one of those options. You can change the color here. You can change the size here if you want it, be, want it to be a little bit different. That's where you do that. And then I will go ahead and add a paragraph option here. And it's really easy. You can just adjust. Everything's click and drag, drag and drop. It's You move it wherever you want. Super, super easy. Um, I'm going to go to my favorite website for some lorem ipsum, and it's called Hipster Ipsum. So it looks like actual text, and that's one of the reasons people use lorem ipsum, if you've heard of that, because it gives you a preview of what it might look like to have an actual paragraph instead of just writing text, 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 just to have space. And it also allows you to fill in the space so you have an idea of what it will look like with text in the area. Area if you're just in a place of wanting to design and you don't have your content yet. So if I have too much text, I just kind of delete that. And then over here, you're able to adjust the style of the text. So if you wanted it all uppercase, you would do that here normal, lowercase, etc. You can change the alignment. Right now it's on justify, which means that it will go completely from left to right with no um, weird bumps and grooves in here. If you go to left, it will give you that look. There's an option for right, centered, all of that in there. If you want to add an icon, you can do that by clicking the icon link. If you go into icon chooser, they have a bunch of preset icons available for you to use, which is super nice. Um, you have the shopping cart, you've got, you know, files, photo, call, there's a martini glass if you need it, mail, there's check links, X's, all kinds of stuff, your, you know, social links, all of that. Um, and then there's also the hamburger icon. There's animation options for you to open up a menu that comes out and so you don't have to have your navigation on top at all times. That's another cool feature. To adjust it, you can go to icon settings and change your color to whatever you want. And then if you want it smaller, you literally can just drag and drop it as small as you want. That's how you do that. There's also the option for making it transparent. So you change the amount of um, color that's shown there. You can add custom icons. So if you do create your own, this shows you how to do it if you need some help. Um, and then you can add your own custom icon into this as well. If you want to add a photo, you go to Media Library and you can upload your files over here. So if you choose a photo, you just click Add to Page and it will add your photo here. You can resize it just by dragging. Another cool feature is you can adjust your photo however you want. And if you want it a different shape or a different style, you want to cut something out of it, there are options for that. You can go into size and position or image, and those are the two areas you can use to adjust your photo. Under image, if you go into size and then you have the fill option where it will just automatically fill your entire um, shape that you've created. So if you wanted this, if you want this to be a square image, you can do that. You can do scale. When you do scale, you can increase the percentage. So say you just want to focus on one of the people in the photo, you can kind of scale there and then you can adjust at what angle the photo is and it'll move it that way. So it's a, a way to adjust it. There's also the size and position option. This is again with the, the locking. You might want this to be locked to the right of your screen so that as the page grows and changes, depending on what screen size it's on, it will stay to the right where it needs to. 
if you do something like a shape and you want it to look like this over here, say you want to have the shape here, and if you just put this here and you don't adjust the horizontal locking, when you do a preview, you'll notice how it's green on the side, and say you wanted it to be all the way on the end. So to adjust that, you could either choose this one, which will just keep the exact same size and proportions, and just make sure it's always to the right. So it's going to stay the same size, but it's going to be on the right, which will make this gap change every time you do that. Or if you choose this horizontal locking on Option, it will stay here on your screen but it will grow with the website page so if you go into preview mode now you'll see that this is still here but because of the site um, size it's basically making this shape larger so if I go into the full preview mode you'll see how much bigger it got you can also align stuff centered so if you want everything to be in the middle you can click center to canvas and it will center to the whole website you can you can use your mouse to drag and drop text or you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to adjust and if it's off a little bit you can always recenter it by clicking on this um, center to canvas option. You can also align items so if you want the item specifically to be centered you can go and click multiple items and the alignment will show up and it will allow you to align to group and then if you want to center to the page you can do that too. What that means is if I had all these things over here and I wanted all of them to be centered or even left aligned I could do that and then I could go center to canvas, left aligned, or I could go center and left aligned, right. Like it allows you to just all of that stuff. You can also do distribute, which an awesome feature there is when you want to have like multiple boxes. Hopefully you're seeing like how this is really simple as far as um, being able to drag and drop and resize and move things around where you want. But if you say you wanted to have like multiple boxes here, you were going to put text or images in or something, you would just do copy paste. You can make multiples. And then you can select multiples again and do copy paste and then have like multiple boxes. But see how they're all kind of crooked? You can um, use this tool to align them. So I want them center aligned and then I also want them to be distributed evenly. So it makes sure that the gap between them is the same. And then I will do the same thing here. Um, and because they kind of came from the same, like I copy and pasted these three, I know that they're going to be exactly in the same spot. But to make sure this line is the same, I basically will just kind of eye it because you can't really distribute very easily the uh, center one when there's only two. Um, so it's pretty close. So I feel like that's a, a decent um, example of how that would work. If you want to change the sizing of all of the boxes together, you can select them all and then literally click and drag and it will keep everything the same and just resize. But that is that. Uh, let's see. In your blog, one of the things that is really cool about the blog is it's you're just creating the template, so you're only going to have one example of a blog post. You're not going to have, you know, a bunch of content and stuff in there. It's just kind of visually looking at what the site would look like. It's a little bit trickier where it's definitely a video that for itself that I will walk you through, but it's really nice that you're able to kind of make your blog look like how you want it to look. And um, some people have done where they, you know, still use a WordPress blog as a subdomain and then they have their website in another platform like Squarespace or Wix or some other website builder and then when they go to do their blog the blog looks like you're on a different website it doesn't look consistent with the rest of your website so this is a really nice way to be able to utilize WordPress but really customize it to but really customize it to you when you're in here if you click on your name down below you're able to go to your user profile your websites able to create a new site add designs to your library you can log out from here as well um, one thing to know about show it is you can create multiple websites in your show it account however you can only have one hosted at a time so if you have multiple businesses you'll have to have multiple show it accounts to have hosting for each of those websites I usually have my one website where I have multiple sites in there and what will happen is you'll have multiple sites to to choose from and what I'll do sometimes is I'll create all of them in one of my show it accounts and then I'll use the share key option to put it into a new account once I have it where I want it. Because they allow you to have a free trial, you're able to use this and do this for as long as you need and um, build a website before even committing to having to purchase it or host it or make it anything. And I feel like that's a really cool feature. It's really simple. It's really easy to use. Everything is quite literally a drag and drop option. 
you can resize things really easily, you know, change text, change images. If you click on an image, you can go here and choose a different photo. It's just super user friendly and easy to use. If you are in a place where you want to remove something like a canvas, you just make sure that you're on the page that you need. When you go into the page, you can duplicate one or cut it out. You can also decide if it's going to be visible on mobile or not. So maybe there's something that's really detailed on desktop, but it's a little too complicated and not good for a mobile site. So you can just remove it from mobile so it doesn't even show up and you don't have to worry about it. You can also, when you have a design, this is a little bit of a, a quick overview of the site canvas option. You'll notice here on their, on their navigation, it says site canvas. This is its own thing that if you have this on multiple sites, when you edit in this one location it will change it everywhere for you so that's a really cool feature um, if you are on like your site and you're on your home page and say you really want this about section to be a site canvas which is something that you might use in other places repeatedly um, a good example of that would be something like your contact form or your Instagram account your footer on your website like this one here. Um, there, so there's things that are consistent that are gonna be exactly the same on multiple pages. Um, that's a good reason to have a site canvas. And so it saves you time. You don't have to worry about like changing it in one page and then forgetting to change it somewhere else. It helps you stay consistent. So if you build this little piece, um, you can easily turn it into a site canvas. For example, on your homepage, if this wasn't already a site canvas, you could turn it into one. So if I clicked on this and I was in page and I go down to contact, I can go to convert to site canvas. And now when I go to the site again and I go to the site canvases, the contact page is now a site canvas. So I can adjust it and it'll change it anywhere I use this exact template. So that's a really cool feature. To connect your website, you can go to connect domain and then you can adjust your favicon up here. You can change your site name. If you're using another service like Google Analytics, Analytics, you can add that in here, your Facebook app IDs in here. If you want to have a blog, you can, you know, add all of that stuff here. And one of the cool things is that when you click subscribe now, you will choose your plan. Um, if you choose the $34 a month, the advanced blog option, they will migrate for you. So that's an option that once you go there, you basically will tell them exactly what you need and they'll migrate the site for you and it's super easy. And then you don't have to worry about doing that part. There's also help tutorials. So you can get some easy access to how to do some things. SEO is awesome here because you can literally type in your SEO description, which is what will show up in Google. You can change your SEO title, add your keywords, and you can choose the image so that when you share your website, this will be the image um, on this particular page that will show up for that. So that's cool that you can adjust all of that. You can also adjust your SEO title so it shows up exactly how you want. In advanced settings, you're able to add some custom HTML. You're also able to do that when you're on your homepage. You can add um, embedded code. And this is where I will add, like, if I have Google Analytics, analytics code and stuff like that, I will add that into this option and that will show up so that it's not actually visible on your website. You'll be able to track your users on your website, which is a really nice feature to know like, you know, how long they're staying on your website or pages they're visiting and how long they're staying on those pages. And if they're clicking away or closing your website, you know, it'll allow you to learn more about your website and how it's keeping people or losing people. And to get that, you actually have to click on this when you're on page, you have to click on the title of it to get the um, SEO options. There's page name and all that stuff is here. So this is kind of like the advanced settings for that. And and that's kind of it. This is kind of, just, like I said, just a quick overview of like what's here, how it kind of works. You're not committed to a template. So if I wanted to say I chose this one, I was like, I'm not really digging it. I want to do a different one. Um, I can do create a new site, pick a new template start with this design, and then I will have this other design. The other one will still be there though. So if I go back to here and I choose my sites, this is when you'll see both options. So um, this was the original one I, I chose and I can either delete it, duplicate it, or open it. And then this is the one I just chose. So it's really nice because it gives you options if you want to play around with a few ideas and you're not really sure what you want to stick with. Show is just such an easy platform to use and it's so nice and user friendly. Um, it's one of the reasons I choose to use it for my clients. That is how you show it. I hope that was really helpful for you guys. I really love show it. Like I said, I use it for all my clients and hopefully this is a video tutorial that kind of gives you a glimpse of what this program is like and what it's capable of and how cool it really is. So um, let me know if you have any questions, leave a comment below. As always, don't forget to subscribe and please share this video so others get to see it as well. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. Bye.